Welcome back. Last lecture, we have created functions. But how to reuse these functions? What I mean by reuse is if we created function that we want to use it in different scripts, how can we use them as the Python built-in functions, for example? Well, in this lecture, we'll explore modules that will answer this question. A module is a file containing function. And to be able to use those functions, we have to import this module in our program or script. For example, the function that we have used last lecture, print message, we have saved it in a file called tools.py. To be able to use this file, we have to import either the file and then we can use tools.printTask, which will execute this function. This is one of the options. Another option to import the function from the file is to use from tools import print task and this will allow us to use the print task function by calling its name directly another option is that we can use from tools import asterisk this will give us access to all the files in the function okay now that we have seen what can we do with module let's fire up our Jupyter notebook and explore modules more i have created a file in here called utils a file contains the function that we have seen in the last lecture add to and fibonacci to be able to use those functions in a new script we have to import utils to import utils you can simply type import utils okay this is great it had imported utils but to import utils the file has to be either in the same directory as the script or the module or in the path if we try to import a module that is not in the same directory or in the path, it will produce an error. So let's try it out. I'll try to import utils3, for example, and it will produce an error because this module does not exist. Okay, once I have imported the module, I can use its functions so we can use utils since this is the name of the module dot add to 15 and 10 and it will print the result so I'm not able to use directly the function name but I have to use the module and the function name we can also use a different import statement which is from utils import asterisk this will give us access directly to the function name at two and i can use it or fab of 100 for example and it will work another better way is to use from utils import and then type the function name that you want to import and fab for example and this will do the same thing as the previous one it will give us access directly to the function name but i will specify exactly what i want to import so how to find out what functions are contained in a module 
To find the function contained in a module, you use the built in function dir or dir and then type the module name. This will give us a list of the functions included in the module. These are special functions and we will look at them in a later section. Okay. We can also type import utils as u. This will provide utils with an alias. So I can use u dot add two. Now we know what a module is. Let's talk about packages. A package is a collection of modules, mostly created by someone else. There are hundreds of thousands of packages that are freely available for Python that will allow you to do almost anything that you dreamed of. To find them, you will usually use the internet search, plus there is a site that have an index for all Python packages, which is called PyPy.org. PyPy is Python package index. It has over 240,000 packages. Okay. So, let's search for a package called GTTS. GTTS is Google Text -to Speech. You can search for it in PyPy. Or let's search for Python TTS, for example. This will provide us with a list of almost all Python packages that are related to text to speech. So, once we have found a package that we want to use, we will install it using pep. You remember pep, right? Okay. Pep is Python package manager. We have seen it before when we installed Jupyter. As we mentioned earlier, one of the coolest features of Jupyter Lab is that it can execute operating system commands. To execute an operating system command, you use an exclamation mark and then follow it by the command. So, pep has lots of command line parameters to install package, uninstall, list, search, etc. So, let's give it a try. I'll type pep search gtts this will search the python packages database and return the result okay so what if i wanted to install a package i'll type exclamation mark pip install gtts Okay, great. Since this package is already installed, pep is, in, is displaying a message that requirement already satisfied. If we want to uninstall a package, we will type pep uninstall gtts. If you notice, there is a little asterisk in here. An asterisk beside a cell means that the cell is still executing. And it will not stop executing since it needs something from us. So I'll stop executing the cell by clicking on the interrupt the kernel. I'll open the command line and show you what it's waiting for. Since we are using directly the command line, I'll type pep 
uninstall GTTS without the exclamation mark. And then enter. Pep is waiting for us to either proceed or not. To proceed, you will type Y. To cancel, you will type N. So I'll cancel it and we, we will do down installation from Jupyter. Okay. So if I type the same command, pep and install gtts minus y, this is the same as typing yes in the command line. I'll execute the cell and it's telling us that it successfully uninstalled gtts. Okay, so I can list all the packages in the current system. I can also find if some of them are outdated by using the hyphen O option. It will take a little bit more time because it's searching the internet and comparing it with the files that we have currently on the system. Okay, so as you can see, some of the packages in here are outdated. I'll update one of them. I'll use pep install minus u and then type this package name, for example, or copy it and paste it, and it will update the package. Great. If I type the game list, it had displayed the outdated packages without the one that we have updated. Okay. So let's say that you have created a very cool script that uses some packages that you had downloaded from the internet. So you want to send this script to one of your friends to test it, for example. So, to allow him to test it successfully, he has to install the same package. To do this, you can type just pep freeze. It will display all the packages in the system with the version number. You can select the output, copy it, and we'll create a new file called requirements. Dot text. I'll open the requirements to text. I'll paste the output of freeze, save the file, and close it. Now, for your friend, you will have to type pip install minus r requirements dot text. And the file name doesn't have to be requirements, but the important thing is that he use minus R with the file that have the output of freeze. Pep is informing us that these packages with this version number is installed on the system. Okay, this is great. This will conclude our modules lecture. Thank you for watching and join me in the next lecture.